the Deutsches Stadion or German Stadium was a monumental Olympic stadium that was to be built in the late 1930s located in Nuremberg, southern Germany. The construction began in 1937 and it was scheduled for completion in 1943 but it was not finished because of the outbreak of World War II and we're going to get into how far they actually got in the design of the Deutsche Stadium. And the first thing to talk about is the ridiculous capacity. So Germany and Adolf Hitler and his architect Albert Speer estimated the capacity of this would be around 405 thousand people which would be by far the biggest stadium in history by well over 150k and it was meant to serve as the end-all be-all olympic games now adolf hitler envisioned that when germany and the axis won world war ii that when this was completed it would house the main attraction the summer olympics every four years and this would be the main Olympic stadium that the games would always take place in. You can see there are five total tiers of seats in the renderings and the models. That enabled the massive capacity of 405,000 spectators built on 24 hecta acres. You can see it has a horseshoe shaped design. It was originally going to be designed as an oval but the plans later changed. When Hitler's architect Albert Speer remarked on the staggering cost of building it, Hitler responded by saying it would cost less than two battleships of the Bismarck class. And really, it's not even just the price here. It's it's just the crazy capacity. I mean, I've never even seen a, a stadium that seats 300K, let alone over 400K. And you can see two different grandstands with the total five sections going up that is not in Nuremberg that is not the construction site that's actually located in a small village in southern Germany now the reason that they built both of those you can see they're at different sloped angles is because back in the 1930s we didn't have any renderings we didn't have computers to to, to look at the stadium and see how you know the seats would be they wanted to see what the vantage point would be of different sloped uh, angled sections so you can see they would go to the top they would look down and say which angled section do we want to use do we want more of a steeper angle does that look better for the spectators in the last highest section or do we want more of a you know kind of lower angle where they'd be farther away but they wouldn't be as high up they built both those prototypes and they also built one of the ends of the Deutsches Stadion into this mountain and there are actual photos of Adolf Hitler exploring the trial stadium and the two different angled look probably deciding between which one they like better and you can actually see where this was all built out of wood and the wood was either completely destroyed by allied bombing or just taken apart you can still see the abandoned stilts that they built in that small town uh, in early preparation for the Deutsche Stadium on which one they wanted to use. So the foundation was dug in 1937 and that was basically it. All that was dug was the foundation. There is virtually no construction photos of the Deutsche Stadium because there's no concrete. There's no involvement in early, you know, stands being constructed. That was the only thing. World War II breaks out. All of the materials, all of the focus goes on to winning World War II for Germany. And the site gets completely abandoned. And because it was such a big area with the foundation already dug... There's a lot of standing water that reached the area and it becomes an artificial lake. And after the war, the horseshoe shaped foundation of the building quickly filled with groundwater and was named Silver Lake by locals. The site became a dump for debris of Nuremberg's destroyed buildings and any kind of other waste, including what today is considered hazardous waste. The southern part of the horseshoe was filled to ground level with waste in 1951. After that, a mountain of waste continued to grow until the dump was closed in 1962. The landfill was eventually covered with a layer of earth and trees were planted on it. The lower layers of water in the lake contain extreme high amounts of hydronic sulfide, which makes humans unconscious when breathed in. Approximately 50 people have already died 
in the lake. So that that is pr a pretty uh, sad story there, but it really isn't all that surprising when you think about World War II and just the sheer amount of destruction that was involved in German cities, in Austrian cities, and they're like, we've got to put this somewhere. They end up taking out all of the Nuremberg buildings, which is where Adolf Hitler and his party had a lot of their rallies. This were going to be this was going to be their new rally grounds. I'm not sure if they would have been able to fill up 400k for just one rally. Honestly, they probably would have been able to, uh, you know, especially if they won World War II. But it's just such an immense structure. And when I look at the Deutsche Stadion, I'm actually surprised it seats 400k. It looks like a stadium that would seat around maybe 250k if I had to guess. I mean, it's just such a massive scale. But I guess according to Albert Schwer, that's what happens when you just put walls and walls and walls of seats. And then they do have one open end forming that big horseshoe shape that was supposed to be built from 1937 to 1943. There were a lot of other German buildings that Adolf Hitler and his architect had designed, and, and some of them were actually in the process of being completed. They were abandoned during construction. This is another one, and it really just comes down to the timing of World War II. If World War II would have started later, this thing probably would have been halfway built and been completely abandoned. And could you imagine what they would have done to it then? Just looking at it, it would have been crazy to see something like that. But because World War II broke out so early in terms of the Deutsche Stadion's construction, they only had dug the foundation of it, and that's what turned it into an artificial lake. Of course, Germany did famously host the 1936 Summer Olympics. Those were awarded to Berlin before Adolf Hitler took power in 1933, but the idea is the original Berlin Olympic Stadium wasn't even close to good enough. They wanted something a lot more grandiose, especially if this stadium was going to host the Olympics every single year and also be used as part of a massive rally grounds. There is a map of the potential rally grounds had all of this been completed, and it does include the Deutsches Stadion. So that is the whole story of it. I would say if this thing actually got built, it would be used very sparingly considering the capacity. It's just the major biggest events, something like the Olympics. I mean, it's almost essentially like if you want me to try and compare it to something like a new city getting to host the Olympics and, and not having the stadium so they have to build up an Olympic stadium it's like that times four because remember the capacity is not 100k it is 400 it's funny that it's 405 why not just 400k but I saw on Wikipedia it's listed as 405,000 people which I'm not even sure I know because I know for a while the, the stadium in Pyongyang, North Korea, was, was the biggest, and it was like around 150K, I want to say, or something like that. This is like three and a half times that, and it's just walls and walls of seats, five total sections of them with the open horseshoe-type shape. Almost reminds me of like Ohio Stadium, if you don't add on the, you know, the student section on the one side of it, which closed it off. But either way, guys, that is just the story of the biggest planned stadium I have ever seen. I'm guessing that's the biggest planned stadium ever that legitimately did start construction because technically, yes, they were going to do it. You know, they had made the prototypes. They had dug the foundation. It was happening. It's not like this is some far crazy out thing. World War II disrupts their plans and it goes by the wayside and unfortunately ends up killing people by, you know, having all that hazardous waste into it and 50 people go out and try and swim and they die because it's so toxic from all of the chemicals and all of the debris and the hazardous waste that was dumped into it subsequently following World War II with all of the rubble that was created from the Allied advancements into Germany. So either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.